Good morning, Prospect Street United Methodist Church. I would uh, normally be, uh, not stressed, but worried that we're starting a little bit late, but you know, our, our two twins uh, for, who come here for our children's moments uh, are here. So we, are they here? Now, well, now I'm stressed because because the children's moments could take a long time. I don't know. And I'm having one of these mornings. It happens every now and then. I was about to say, you know, as I was reflecting this morning, I was like, man, so much is being filled in my heart. Like God is really speaking today. And I was like, no, 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 hold up, Josh. God's not speaking more to me today. I'm just a little more receptive. Amen. God speaks to us all the time. Some mornings we're just focused on the wrong things. And so for some reason, I was a little more open today. And I just, just all sorts of things, a revelation is in my heart that I've been experiencing. And maybe that has something to do with the fall. You know, I, I think in the fall, when the weather's cooler, I tend to be a little more um, introspective, I suppose. Um, but I don't know, really know where I'm going with all this. There was something I was going to say. Um, boy, oh boy. Uh, I'll just, I'll save some of that for the, uh, for the prayer time, I think, uh, some of my thoughts. Um, welcome, glad to see you're all here. Um, announcements, I, I think, where's Diane? Is she here? Okay. There's, you know, I've been talking to a number of people. You're, I haven't been throwing everything changing at you, but you, you already kind of see the kind of person I am. I mean, I'm just out and about and down. I'm, I'm with you. And I think we need to be more, oh, I know what I was going to say. I know what I was going to say. You know how I get on you all, and I'm glad you're doing this now. You're laughing at me, but at least you're smiling. You're laughing with me. You know, I get on you, but like, because I, sometimes I see you, and you're all sitting here looking at me like, like, I don't know if it's, I don't know what's going on, if you're angry at me or you're just not. But I hope that you're happy to be here. And part of that is, I, listen, I don't care what you got going on, Okay. You might have, you might have just, someone might have cut you off, okay, coming into the church, or I don't know. But listen, listen, we should be full of joy when we come to worship, amen? And I'll, and I'll tell you why. I think about this. Like, what if somebody came in here to the church to check us out for the very first time, and they walk in and a bunch of people are like, oh, wow. They may not be very, I don't know what's going on with this place. They're not happy to be here, so maybe... And then I thought, even bigger than that, even if we don't get any visitors, guess who comes to visit with us, in a sense, every Sunday? The Almighty. Um, if God comes walking in here and he sees us all like, oh. And I'm not saying that's your attitude, by the way. I'm not saying you're coming in here in a bad mood. But your facial expressions sometimes reflect that. So if it seems like I'm getting on you because I want to see some smiles, it's because we should be full of joy that we're in the, in the presence of the Almighty and then we want to show God. You know, what's the, the, the Old Testament when you, you've got Abraham and he's got the three visitors who come, right? And he, he prepares it and he's hospitable and he, he, he rolls out the red carpet. You just, you never know who's going to show up. But you can always expect that God is going to show up. Amen? And we should be rolling out that red carpet and be full of joy. Not just here, of course, but everywhere. But in particularly here. That's what I was going to say. Thank you, Ruth Ann. Something about, no, I'm just, no, you didn't do anything. I had to look at you all for a little bit longer to, to remember what I, I don't have notes, obviously. Um, what I was going to say, though, before all that, was that um, my nature is to, I want to get uh, participation. I want people to be involved. It's not just a matter of, and we keep harping on signing up for things. What you'll probably start seeing me do, and it might start, it may start with just even the, uh, trunk or treat because I think um, I want to tell you I came when I came from Green Camp I mean we were a much smaller congregation but we would have almost some 30 some cars out in the parking lot uh, to outreach to children and that is those are the these are the moments like a trunk or treat or whatever ha whatever have you in which we are become the face of the community do you hear what I'm saying we show them what we're about and if Ten cars are in a parking lot from this church. Guess what? What do you think that says? What do you think that tells the community, right? So you're going to see me more and more like, instead of waiting for people 
to go to a certain part of the church to, to do something, to sign up, I'm going to be putting that stuff right in your face, okay? Sign it, because we need you, right, Mike? So just be aware. I haven't done some of that stuff yet because I'm trying to feel this whole thing out, but that's, that's what it takes. It takes some, uh, we need to be, um, oh, aggressive is the wrong word, but you know what I'm talking about. You, anybody got a better word than that? Huh? Assertive. I like that. That's much better than aggressive. Aggressive has so many negative connotations to it. Okay. I wanted to let you know that. So I don't know where Diane is, but I don't know if Diane has a sign-up sheet. But hopefully she does. And if not, we'll get one of those out because it's coming right up, the, uh, the trunk or treat. Um, while I'm kind of just looking for anything else to say, does anybody have any – I want to use this as announcement time. Does anybody have anything else they, they would like to bring up that's going on in Life Church? We've got the fish fry. I know I've been bringing that up constantly. We need tickets sold for that, so I don't know. I think it sounds, I've been told we're down on ticket sales. So if that, hopefully that makes you nervous. Um, it could be the times that we're in, in terms of COVID, but I, I think that part of that also has to do with just how assertive we all can be in terms of what the ministry is in the life of this church. So I want to let you know that I've been told the tickets are down for the fish fry that's upcoming. But please pay attention to the stuff that's going on in the life of the church in your bulletin. And, and ask yourself, how can I participate? What, are, what, what can I do different this year? Um, in particular, so that we can be a church that, that when, the, when, when we come outside of these walls, that people see how, um, how full of life we are and how much we care about the community and the children. Um, do we have any visitors with us today for the very first time? I know we have one, and you're going to be introduced here in a bit, I believe, okay? But uh, we can at least applaud for you today. We have our special guest here, Brody, to play piano and his father, Tom. Let us give him a round of applause for being here with us. Thank you. And Lynette will give a little more of an intro before he, he, he offers up his special music. So we thank you. Uh, please ask that you fill out the attendance pad uh, for, uh, for, uh, for me today so I'm aware of who is worshiping with us. And let us uh, join together now in, in the uh, saying of our mission statement. We are united to love God, to grow in our commitment to Christ, to serve others, and welcome all people. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, this is the day that the Lord has made, and together we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. If you were seeing on the board um, up there a bunch of pictures, Kaylin Coog was going to come and talk today, but as of yesterday, we couldn't get those to turn on, and so we weren't sure if they were going to happen today, and so Kaylin is rescheduling. So that's the reason why you saw all those pictures flip through real quick. Will you stand if you are able, and let's worship the Lord with holy boldness, <coughs> An assertion. An assertion. <laughs> Not aggression. Not aggression. Oh, 
I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever 
forever worship you. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing? Hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever. Forever worship you. writing a little bit. Interesting. I, I, sometimes I, I try to find different ways to do children's moments, and so I try to get creative. And so I'm, this this could be successful, or it could fall flat on its face.
So today, today we're talking about service, okay? Um, and uh, and we serve how we serve one another. And so when when Jesus came to this world, he saw the way the world did service, and in his opinion, they were doing it all wrong. When we think about serving someone, generally we think about the king, okay? So you have the king in majesty. And what we do is we have, in this world we have kings, right? We have rulers, we have those with power. And so we go and we serve before that king. And so we bow down before the king, right? Because we, we serve the king. So, which, which makes sense. We serve God, do we not? He's our king. The thing is, though, sometimes you have the king who basically in the world has a lot of everything. The power, the control, the money. You're right. And so, the king says, though, you serve me, Bob. Give me some of your service. Yeah, that's right. I'll take some of that. Thank you. So now, Bob, he may not be the king, but he, is he closest to the king right now? He's the next kind of in power. He's, he's, not, as, he's not as powerful as the king, but he's, he's more powerful than Mike. And I just took some of his stuff, didn't I? What do you think he's going to do? No, not from the king. You think I'm going to give him back the money I just took? No, because he served me well and I took what he had. What do you, who do you think he's going to turn to to get some of that money back? Who do you, who, this guy here, he's a little bit lower than him. He has power over him, so what do you think he's going to do? He's going to turn to Mike and say, Mike, serve me. I'll take he might not only take what I, to recoup what I took from him, he might take just a little bit even more, right? Why not? What is he going to do about it? He has to, right? He has to serve him or else what would he might do? He's like, if you don't give me what you owe me or, and a little bit more, he might be in trouble. So he has to serve him. He has no choice. But now he's got this. What do you think he's going to do? I don't think so. No. He's going to be worried that he doesn't have enough. So he's going, to, he's going to turn to Miss Tracy, who's a little bit under him. He's going to take some of hers because she has to serve him. What do you think Miss Tracy's going to do? <laughs> that would be nice. Oh. Now what? What happened to you? And there, friends, is the lesson. But in this world, you go, I have nothing now. Do you have somebody who's beneath you? Uh, yeah. yeah. What does she have? One. One penny. Well, what are you going to do? You don't want to have nothing, so you're going to say, you serve me. Nothing. She has nothing. Can she, what, who's next to her? Uh, no one. No one. Wow. She's left with nothing. Right? Yeah. And so Jesus saw what a mixed up world we live in in which there are people who are going to go, because this will never change, right? You think he's ever going to want to trade places? No, he likes where he's at. Yeah. So put your, put your coins back in here. Yeah. The king said, that the, our Lord Jesus said, I can't be that kind of king. You're, I can't have that same sort of model. And so Jesus said instead, you know what? I'm the king. I got just about everything I need. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, no, wait. No, actually, we'll do it this way. Here you go. Instead of you, instead of me taking from you, Bob, I just gave you a penny. I'm above you, and I gave you something, right? That's different than me taking something. So that kind of model, what does that tell you you should do? Well, sure, but, but you are, I'm above you, and I gave you something. You are above, you're above who? Turn to your, no, turn. Who's that? He's, it's a teaching of who you're supposed to serve. You, by serving me, guess who else you serve? 
Yes, turn that to Mike. Now that's scary, isn't it? Because now, guess what? Yeah. But I'm a giving God. Look. Now you don't have anything, but, but you have something. But guess what? No fear. There you go. Now, there we go. Go ahead. All right, now who has a penny? Ooh, look, someone in our group doesn't have a penny. Get in a circle. Get in a, do your best to get into a circle. So f all this time we've been in a line, right? To indicate he was at the top and you were at the bottom. But when we get into a circle, is there a top and a bottom? No. Now, someone in our circle doesn't have a penny, right? So what should we do? What should we do? We can't let her be without a penny for very long. What should we do? Oh, now someone in our circle is without a penny. What should we do? Oh, now someone in our circle is without a penny. What should we do? Do you see what happens? There's always going to be someone in this world who doesn't have anything. And there's always going to be people in our circle who do. And it's our calling as people who serve to always be paying attention to who is in need. But to give to the point where then she's in need. And so we have to pay attention. Now we're, and, and on and on it goes. Does that make sense? Beautiful. Thank you, guys. And does that make sense to everybody else? I know that gets kind of deep, but I hope I led us through that in a, in a way that made sense. I hope, adults, did you learn a little bit today too? Good. All right. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Repeat after me, dear God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my teachers, my parents, and my friends. Help me, oh God, to see that in serving you, I am called to serve the world. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you to the volunteers. You did wonderful. I went a lot better than I thought. I was really, I, I could not sleep last night. I'm like, man, Josh, what are you trying to do today? All right. Our scripture lesson today, you'll see how all this plays together. I might, I might even kind of repeat myself, but bear with me. I like to hit home these messages. So our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35. Through 45, let those who have ears hear the word of the Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. <laughs> are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they, became, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave for all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, 
but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Holy and gracious Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. For you and only you are our rock and our redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen. <clears throat> there was a show on TV not too long ago in our past. And I think it was called Undercover Boss. Remember this show at all? And basically, I think what would happen is the CEO of a company that was perhaps failing in some regards in certain areas of that business would then take matters into his or her own hands and kind of basically go stealth or undercover. And I'll tell you what, at first I didn't, I didn't necessarily like the show because I, I thought the whole reason for doing it was only to then find those folks who weren't doing the, their job correctly for the CEO to see what was going on to, to maybe fire those employees that were taking advantage of the company or whatever the case may be. But what I discovered was what, is what, that while there was some of that going on, you couldn't get rid of it completely, I think the real reasoning behind the show was to humble the boss or the CEO so that they would see that it wasn't just an employee here or there that was wrong, but it was a whole system perhaps at times that was at fault. And that was at no fault then of the employees. They were almost just kind of doing what they were told within the system. But my favorite part of the show came when, whenever there were revelations made either by the boss in regards to his or her employees or the other way around. When an employee realized they weren't in the presence of just another employee when the reveal happened, but that they were in the presence of the boss, the CEO of the entire company, and, and what that did to change perceptions. I think the, I believe the very same thing is true of our own God in the gospel. I think God saw, and he looked down at this world, God saw that the world was in need, right, of some serious overhaul. Things weren't right. And while God had always been in and will always be the CEO, friends, God needed to become also one of the employees at one point in time. He needed to see what was really going on. To dwell with us in the flesh so as to get a better understanding of who we are and why we tend to do the things we do. Why it is that we would serve him as Lord not because he then shone as bright as the sun, that that wasn't the reason for us to serve him. Because if that would have been the case then, because then everyone would have done that, right? Everyone would have done that for fear that if you didn't, you'd be disintegrated or turned into a pillar of salt or something like that. Because serving out of obligation or out of fear is not the kind of service, hear this, that God desires of us for one another. When we serve out of fear, we are in a sense selfishly serving, I would say, because we are, we are only serving those we are serving really to save our own hides. If we don't roll out the red carpet for so and so, then it will be our heads that will roll. The king will see this and will be in trouble. The boss gets served out of fear of the employees losing their job. So then we only serve so as to keep whatever status we have. And so serving, in a way, then can become humiliating. Right? And since it is humiliating to serve at times, since we hate doing it because it keeps us in our place, then guess what we're going to do? We're going to make someone else feel that way by, by being a tyrant or, or lording it over them, how we feel. 
So Jesus saw this was how the world was behaving in terms of service. And he wasn't going to have no part of this. Jesus is basically saying, under my rule, hear this, there's not going to be a pecking order. It's not a pecking order. There is no caste system that we might be used to where there's a king on top and everyone serves him and the, the one below the king serves the king, but then everyone else under that guy, right, serves him as you saw in the children's moments and so on and so forth. So that the ones at the very bottom, guess what they have to be then? They're not just slaves to the king. They are slaves to every single person. Do you hear that? They have. They're, they're, everywhere they look, there are rulers that hoard things over them. A horrible world. Jesus as king says he has come not to be served, but to do the opposite, to serve, to change, to turn the whole thing upside down. He has come not so that all would be slaves to him, but then what does he say that he was going to be a slave to all? Wow, that's incredible. Therefore now, anyone hear this who chooses to follow Jesus, they've got an interesting choice to make, do they not? Do they not? To serve Jesus as king means to serve the one who serves all. Wow. Amazing when you think about it. I hope that blows your minds. Do you get me? Wow. You want to serve the king? Guess what you got to do? You got to serve the lowest of the low. You got to get down on your knees and serve them. You can't serve Jesus as king and at the same time live a life expecting others to bow down before you or else guess what you've gotten the whole thing wrong because then you've placed yourself above the God of the universe fascinating isn't it what Jesus did Jesus created a new order of service instead of serving those greater than you which we do which only then keeps them in their place and you and yours, if you serve those that are seen as less than, then by doing so, they are raised, friends, from their normal status, and we can't help but to be lowered from ours. Which is really what service is all about, right? It shouldn't be about charity. I hope you hear that. It should not be about charity. Service is not charity. Like, I feel sorry for you, so here you go. Here's a little bit of extra scrapes off my table. Service ultimately is about empowerment, friends. Empowerment. And so Jesus came and dwelt with us and became a slave to all because he wanted to see how close people would still want to be near him when he was at the very bottom. Would they still be willing to follow a king? who was at the bottom. If you care for a king, hear this, when he is at the bottom, then guess what? Good news, you're a person who cares for people when they're at the bottom, period. And that's what Jesus the king wants to see for us, that we care for the people at the bottom. Because friends, kingdom building, hear this, starts with the bottom up, amen? That's a successful business in God's name, amen. Because friends, the kingdom of God is not one that once again represents a pecking order caste system. It's a, it's a kingdom of, as you saw at the end of that children's moments, a, king, a kingdom I would say of mutuality. Mutuality. One in which we mutually serve one another. That's what, that's what, that's what God would like to see us get to. One in which we mutually see each other and we mutually share power, the power that we've been given, we mutually share in the wealth that we've been given, and we mutually see one another in value and worth. I believe that in the kingdom of God, there is no other way. There is no other way. And we'll, we'll, we'll realize that, I believe, when we get to heaven, amen? We'll see, it's, we'll see, wow, here's what Jesus really had in mind. And to give you a glimpse of what I think 
God's successful business plan of the kingdom looks like. There's a, there's a, a wonderful story or parable, maybe you've heard of it, maybe not, of a depiction of heaven and hell. I first heard it from my dad, and I think it shows what God's vision is for happiness perfectly, okay? The famous story, the depiction of heaven and hell goes like this. One day, a man said to God, God, I would like to know what heaven and hell look like. God showed the man two doors. Inside the first one in the middle of the room was a large round table with a large pot of stew. Smelled delicious and made the man's mouth water. But the people sitting around the table, they were thin and sickly looking. They appeared to be famished. They were holding spoons with very long handles. And each found it and each found it impossible to reach into the pot of the stew and take a spoonful. Where they could actually they could take they could take a spoonful of the stew, but because the handles were longer than their arms, they could not then get the spoons back into their mouths. Do you see what I'm saying? They could reach the pot, but they couldn't feed themselves. The man shuddered at the sight of their misery and suffering, and God said, you have seen hell. Behind the second door, the room appeared exactly the same. There was a large round table with a large pot of wonderful stew that made the man's mouth water once again. The people had the same long-handled spoons, but they were well-nourished and plump. They were laughing and talking. And the man said, I don't understand. God smiled. It is simple, he said. Love only requires one skill. These people learned early on to share and feed one another, while the greedy only thought of themselves. Sometimes thinking of our own personal gratification, we tend to forget about our interdependence, friends, with everyone and everything around us. Not to help our fellow human being simply means, in the end, harming our very selves. Do you hear that? Since we are all connected in a very, on a very deep level. Friends, we are called to serve all in reverence and respect. Because in the end, our own happiness will be dependent not upon being served by those below us and serving those above us, but in the mutuality of serving and being served by those who are our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Those who are truly great are those who realize that the only reason they are great is due to the fact that they recognize greatness in all. Those who are truly great see the presence of God in all and thus serve this undercover boss accordingly with all their heart, mind, body, and soul. And all of God's children said, Amen.
This morning, as, as you heard Judy talk, we, we didn't know what was going to happen with the slides, so I was deep in prayer. <laughs> God, what is going to happen? Um, I started thinking about songs that maybe perhaps we would all know that we wouldn't need words for, that I could just lead. Um, and one of my favorite songs I think is very easy to sing. You don't done take much, many words, and I'm sure you all know it. Lord, prepare me to be a... Yeah, see, you know what's up. We could do that one pretty easily without words. I love that song, but it got me thinking about that song. Parts of that song I love, but parts of it are always uh, bothers me, and I'll, and I'll explain myself. I think the word sanctuary, and that's what this is, and I get it, but the word sanctuary can also, uh, it means a place, if we know, like a place for, for shelter, for to, to maybe hide or escape, to get away to be protected, right? And that is what a sanctuary is. Um, I think sometimes our theology puts the sanctuary as like, oh, we're the ones who need the, we're the ones that need the shelter. Oh, help us, oh Lord, and we're going to run to the sanctuary, to our church, to hide away from the world. Or, sometimes we feel like we've got to give God a sanctuary to protect God from this world. And I'm always the person who will say, you think God needs our protection? Amen? No. We, we spend too much time, time pri trying to protect our Lord and not enough time spent sharing our Lord. Amen? Come on now. I know I'm preaching right before prayer. What am I going to do? But I start, so that, that's why that word sanctuary, I'm always like, man, I want to be able to embrace that in different and so I thought about, we're saying, Lord, make me a sanctuary, right? I become the sanctuary. I become the dwelling place. I become, I, I would say another word for it, the protection, the protector, okay? And so I want to tell you, then that got me thinking. We had just yesterday, my parents will be up here for the second service um, because we had a little memorial uh, my, my aunt lives out in California. We had a memorial yesterday for my, my uncle who passed about a month and a half ago. And a lot of the things that were being said about him, he was a CODA driver in Columbus, and a lot of the words that kept being brought up about him was he was, he was, an older, he was the oldest of the siblings, and so he, he kind of ended up being a protector for the, for the siblings, for the brother and sister, and that then carried on into his life. He saw himself as a protector for those who needed protecting. He was a sanctuary. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are people in this world we are called, friends, to be a sanctuary for. Do you hear me? Make me a sanctuary for this world that has no place to go. Make me be that for this world. What a powerful statement. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and holy God, my oh my, we've been blessed with so much. How much that we have been given in resources. And yet, unfortunately, oh God, forgive us as a people of faith how little we put to use for the transformation of this world. How little at times we place our trust and faith in you to actually do the unthinkable, which would be to get out of the boat that we're safe in and walk out into a storm, a stormy sea. So often we choose to stay in the boat. We call you Savior, but we're not willing to go out into the stormy sea where you dwell, where real change can happen. 
The stormy sea will stay the stormy sea as long as we sit in the boat and do nothing about it. To calm the storm requires us to go out into it and be protectors for those who are drowning. To show them how to walk on water. instead of finding themselves beneath it. Gracious God, help us be that as a church, to be gracious, to offer our hand to those who need it, to empower those who feel that they are at the very bottom, to show them that that's not the way that God sees them, but don't just to, not just to say that in word, but to, to show that in action. They are of worth and value by God, and, and we're the reason that they can see it. Gracious God, help us to be that way. But we ask in our own personal lives that if there are things that we're stuck on, there are things that we're worried about, things that we're stressed about, the fears that we are that confront us, that we're having to deal with, we, we ask you, God, to take those from our lives. We should have no fear the consequences or the results when we live out lives in unconditional love for our neighbor. If we trust in you, good things will happen. May we believe that in all that we are. We pray that is the case for us personally and as a church. And so now, oh God, as a body of believers who come together in faith, we pray the prayer your son Jesus taught us, praying our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Won't you now stand and join the praise team and all of us who are here in the closing song today, You Are My King.